Learning to fit uh, clothes is probably one of the most frustrating, but also one of the most rewarding skills you can learn when you get it right. So in this video, let me talk you through the three stages of fitting clothes through the garment making process. The three stages you really need to know about if you want to sew clothes that fit. Welcome back my sewing friends. It is always lovely to have you here today. Uh, if we are just meeting for the first time, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and here on this channel we do everything to improve your sewing skills so you can make better clothes. And uh, I'm also the creator and founder of Vintage Sewing School and I get a lot of, lot of people in just learning to sew and experiencing this thing that we call fitting our garments for the first time. Learning to sew probably came about because you wanted to make garments that actually fit your body. I bet that's probably one of the reasons why you started actually learning to sew in the first place. And very often you realize it only takes making up about one garment before you realize that it is not one size fits all. That size on the packet means nothing. And uh, these patterns are meant to be fitted to be tweaked to fit your body. We're all unique and there is no way that we can possibly fit into this one pattern size. I don't want to burst anyone's bubble here, but I personally do believe that learning to fit our garments and patterns to our bodies is a never ending learning process. It's something that there is really no end point to learning. It's just that you get better and better and better at understanding the patterns, understanding your body, what you like. It's just never ending. So I would never think about this as a an end point to learning how to fit. But there are, and in my world, and this is how I teach my students in Vintage Sewing School, is that there are three main stages of fitting during this garment making process. There's three main stages that you can fit and tweak your garments, your first your patterns and then to garments, that really is going to make the difference. And this is how you make great garments. This is how it's done in industry. This is how sample houses, design houses, there's three main, main stages that you really need to know about. And I know you're going to ask a question of, well, when can you skip these stages? Because that sounds like a lot of work. I will talk about that at the end after we outline these different stages that you can actually learn and start implementing into your own garment making. Like when you're sewing your own process, these three, these three stops to start fitting and making better fitting garments. Stage one is what I call the preliminary uh, fitting. So this is where you're fitting it at the pattern stage. So, and a tissue fitting. So let's just talk that through. So preliminary uh, fittings is basically when uh, I think most of us pretty well uh, take a copy of these tissues paper and we're tracing it out onto uh, some much more sturdy, nicer paper. And I also have uh, videos here on different methods of tracing uh, patterns if you're interested as well. Don't know what I'm talking about. So at this stage, the preliminary stage, we are uh, gathering our sort of initial starting size from maybe what they say here and we're making a tracing and we're tracing out our size that we like and making preliminary changes to a real pattern paper pattern and this is where we would make changes based on measurements alone so this is where you would get your finished garment measurements versus your body measurements think about how much ease you would like depending on the fit and the style of the garment and then make any adjustments there Maybe you're like me and pear shaped and have quite big hips. I know pretty much every single pattern I almost work on, depending on the style of course, will need to be uh, added at the hip area. And this is where I would add slight adjustments like this, just for size. So this is literally just like size measurements, making preliminary adjustments. Maybe it's blending two sizes together. Maybe it's making a full bust adjustment that you just know that you have to make based on measuring finished garment measurements versus your body measurements versus how you want that garment to fit. Preliminary adjustments. You can also use the tissue as itself uh, and do a tissue fitting at this stage as well. Same sort of thing. You just like going off rough, rough measurements of finished garment versus your body measurements. The next stage is the toile, the mock-up, the muslin stage. So this is where you make a, a sample garment, a test garment of the garment that you're making. So make it out of uh, calico or muslin uh, and, or, 
secondhand bed sheets are my favorite. I also have videos uh, here on making twiles um, and fabrics to use uh, if you're interested in learning more. All of these videos I'm going to link down below for you as well so you can watch them after this. So this is a mock-up, a sample of the garment. This is where you can really actually start to fit your garment. We are like the process of making a, a garment, right, is making a flat piece of fabric, a 2D object, flat piece of fabric into a 3D object that fits our body. We're all contoured differently. No matter how much you measure a bust measurement, that has no idea of where your actual bust point is, whether it's you're more at the front or the back or the length through here. These are all of the different measurements that come into play and there's no way that you could possibly do that by measurements alone. You need to get this fabric on your body and actually look and feel because here's the thing too. We all have different tastes and preference. So it does, like what, what one measurement might say is different for how you actually want it to fit and feel on your body when you have it on. So at this stage, you can make major changes still because this is just a test one. So you can still do a full bust adjustment. You can slash and spread the pattern. You can draw all over this to create new design lines and see where your pocket placements might be, if they're in the right spot or not. And you can really make some major changes still at this stage. And that's the whole point of this is that you're not uh, winging it and uh, going straight into your fashion fabric yet because we're doing a test because we can still make all those major changes from here. And then once you're actually able to, uh, after your twirl, of course, uh, learning to uh, translate these changes you want to make to your pattern is a whole, like that is the skill of fitting and that is like slow increments. You get better and better and better and learn more and more. Uh, that takes time, of course, but once you do that, you make those adjustments to your pattern and then you go to what I call the next step, which I call the outside shell fitting. And so this is more what you may find actually the only part that you might find in a pattern instruction. Uh, and this is where you basically have the what I call the outside shell. So in your real fashion fabric, you basically get to this point as well. You have the shell of the garment made. So all of your construction seams are made. You have all the stay stitching, very important. So you're not going to stretch anything out along the way as you're trying it on. So it's just this basic shell. So you do not have any collars or cuffs or hems or facings, anything like this. None of these bits are done. It is just the, the shell of the garment. So you can basically still tweak and fit and mold because again, we're doing it in a different fabric. So it's going to look and fit a bit different. So you always fit as you go still, even after all of that in your real fashion fabric as you go so that you get, you can still make those changes before the facing goes on, before the neckline goes on. You must fit it as you go. And it's only sometimes that you'll actually find this step mentioned in sort of pattern making works. And this is why fitting is hard as well, because it's not really mentioned. This is the whole process of garment making that is not the steps, the instructions to make up this pattern. It's all the assumed knowledge, right? This is what we talk about here all of the time. This is part of the assumed knowledge of sewing that when you do know it, uh, you need help to learn because a pattern was never designed for you to just learn how to sew. It was designed for people who already know how to sew to just put together this particular design. So I know you're already asking, do I really have to do all of these steps? <laughs> well, of course it's up to you and you can do whatever you like in your garment sewing that works for you. But this is the real process. If you want to make really great garments that fit, that turn perfect the first time, of course you realize it's not the very, very first time because we have made all of these steps along the way, this is how you get it really perfect. This is the process. This is what you use in design houses in when you're making up client garments, when I used to make up client garments and I still do this for myself in my own garment making now, I still include all this. So do you have to still do all these steps? As you get more experienced and you get uh, better at, first I think you learn sewing, then you learn fitting, that you implement this process in your um, process as well. And then you can learn, you know, um, design changes for uh, designing different ga um, garment styles. But as you get better and better, you'll start making more changes to your pattern, right? And make more complicated designs and actually going through this process and making the preliminary adjustments, doing your twirl, doing it, it actually becomes even more necessary and you realize how necessary it is. So you generally don't skip it, <laughs> the more experienced you get. 
when you do skip it is when you're only coming, you get more and more experience, but you're coming back to say some simpler garments that are loose fitting, that don't require a lot of fitting. That is when you might skip uh, your twirl, maybe, because you know how to make preliminary adjustments. You know that garment type, say a loose fitting blouse, you'll be able to take your measurements and you'll just know that because it's loose fitting anyway, there's not a lot involved. You'll know that you're able to take good enough preliminary fitting adjustments and tissue fitting that you can go straight to an outside shell in your regular garment and just do a few tweaks from there. You'll be confident about only skipping things when you're uh, doing, say, going back to simpler designs that you already know. But as you keep uh, sort of making more complicated ones, which you do, of course, uh, you still go through the whole process. So I hope that makes sense in um, when you might skip things so to say not really skip but just know that you can uh, only have to do the ones that apply to you depending on your skill level and the type of garment that you're making. I think you can see what I mean when uh, I say that you don't fitting is a lifelong skill right you can see how then there is no real end process <laughs> and that this is the process of making great garments that fit and I know that that is what you want that is why you're here watching this video and why you work so hard and put so much love and care into your garments and I know you want them to turn out well so when you do learn to just slow down a little bit and and just accept that this is part of the process you'll soon I think see really great results and see better fitting garments the more time you take to do all of these tweaks and you now know the three steps the three stages that you would actually look at doing fitting adjustments and fit your garment in and so with practice I know you're going to make these great garments that fit you beautifully that you love so tell me below in the comments what has been your biggest takeaway from this video or if you've already started your fitting journey, what has been the biggest help for you that steps in your process that you've implemented that have helped you in your fitting process? Share all those below because uh, all of our other viewers will read them and it's sort of all sharing our information to help others reach their sewing goals as well. And that's what we do here. So I thank you very much for watching. As always, look forward to seeing you next time. Happy sewing. Bye.